A very quick recap for for uh, for some of you who may be new uh, to to this issue. This is the conceptual framework of, of malnutrition, which has been very commonly used worldwide since the 90s. That reminds us that uh, nutrition is affected by dietary intake and disease at the individual level, and that is shaped by household particularity of care uh, and feeding practices and uh, the household. Food systems and agriculture can influence uh, this uh, nutrition in many ways. Of course, the food security aspect by providing more diverse food, but also in terms of strengthening both natural and human resource management. So when we work, for example, with pharma cooperatives or, or women's groups and so on, we can strengthen the social capital that families can build on to, to secure uh, food health and care. Uh, we have a big impact through health, uh, in particular, for example, through income that can be then used for, for purchasing uh, soap or, or, or medicine or just one family clinics. Um, and directly addressing um, food-related diseases uh, and agriculture-related diseases, food safety, for example, and also and uh, uh, providing just education and technology. All of this is, is not uh, automatic, which is why uh, we have been in the process for many years of developing key recommendations for how you can improve nutrition for agriculture and food systems. These are based on the recognition that the answers will be context specific. You can't operate in the same way whether you're in a pastoral community in Somalia or if you're in an urban slum in Bangkok. Um, and that is why um, a, a key part of it is making nutrition objectives explicit, integrating indicators in particular of diet, assessing the context um, to understand the causes of malnutrition and therefore design relevant interventions, um, target the more vulnerable. Uh, collaborate with other sectors. So these are these first four are very much on the the kind of a strategic planning type of of, of, uh, of recommendations. And then we have the content. Um, and there we really say we it starts with natural resource management, including promoting biodiversity. Um, gender sensitivity is absolutely key. Diversification of food production uh, is, is is key. We've seen a lot of focus on staple crops and commercial agriculture and, and individual value chains, but we really need to broaden the scope, um, including by crops uh, where, where relevant. And finally, there's a lot to do um, on processing, storage, and preservation, and expanding market access for vulnerable groups. An interesting thing to note is we started this three years with a focus on nutrition sensitive agriculture, but the, the reality of the double burden of malnutrition the reality of urbanization and the transformation of food systems and how people access food, i.e. increasingly through markets uh, and with a growing role for supermarkets and, and a strong role for the informal food sector as well, has led to this awareness that we can't just look at agriculture in isolation. We need to look at it within the whole chain. Um, and the last recommendation, last but not least, central to everything is accompanying everything with nutrition, promotion, and education. From the producer, to the consumer and empowering people to make health. Agriculture, I mean, the food and agriculture system is, is largely led by private sector uh, actors. And that is why the role of public sector is more about adopting policies that can shape the way uh, private actors work in the form of incentives. Um, and this is why we formulated these recommendations on policy. Um, but it's, it's a quite a new area of work. I think you know what the first one here is increase incentives and decrease disincentives for availability, access, and consumption of diverse and sustainable foods through environmentally sustainable production, trade, and distribution. A big area of exploration uh, lies ahead of us. We had last week a fascinating symposium on trade and nutrition organized by the Academy of Nutrition, which shows that there are many questions we still have to, to address. Um, but it's fascinating to see more and more actors in this society. I'll give you a quick overview of some tools that we've been developing uh, as a target audience for people who are involved in program planning or advising policy makers uh, on, on food and agriculture and programs. And these are very much about how to bring a nutrition lens to your planning. Um, 
So those are the key recommendations I just showed. We've recently uh, published uh, a kind of guidance checklist, um, which is you know, basically designed to guide the program planner through the situation analysis and program design to ensure they bring this nutrition lens to whatever type of program uh, that is being, being developed. Um, so this, I think, is, is available online in French, English, and in Spanish. Um, to accompany that, a big question that is coming up is what indicators do we use to monitor and evaluate our nutrition sensitive agriculture programs? Uh, how do we know we're doing, we're doing well? And that is why we, we must pull, pull together a compendium of indicators that can be relevant for monitoring and evaluating um, nutrition sensitive agriculture investments and, and, and policies. Um, a, a final draft can be released with the copy editor and layout our system to be shared very soon. And we're also working on a, a companion of actions or a toolbox of interventions. This is, this is very much work in progress. That gives a little bit more of the, of the content of activities of what, what to do, a kind of menu of options to choose from. So these three documents that together provide a kind of menu, uh, uh, a guide that's a kind of recipe book. And then you can, with, with methods to adapt the recipe to the context for your operation. Um, Joint planning and, and, and integrating agriculture with other sectors is a fundamental part of, um, of nutrition sensitive agriculture, which is why we also have guidance for, for uh, joint programming, both for guidelines and, and an online model. Very interactive and, and lots of fun, so I encourage you to take it. We've also adjusted this, adapted this guidance to colleagues with more specifically on resilience programming and also on, on social protection. And there's a a paper also we're preparing now on climate change and nutrition, looking at also the synergies, the win wins between climate smart agriculture and, and now the the most I think from the most exciting is we're trying to pull all of this together in a set of e-learning modules. The whole process is led by Dumiti, who is here with me, so this you can see her. Uh, yes, we can. <laughs> um, and uh, we started with a first uh, well, we have a, a couple online already, but the one we're working on now and finalizing in the next couple of weeks is one on basic concepts of food systems and, and how to make them nutrition sensitive. Um, and there will be two other modules more on details about, uh, sorry, yeah, we have one on the basic concepts of nutrition livelihoods already online. We're now working on one that is really looking at food systems and nutrition, how to make them nutrition sensitive. And then we'll work on more detailed guidance on situation analysis and project and program science. Um, basically, we're very aware that making food systems work for nutrition requires building capacities of consumers, farmers, agricultural extension workers, private sector enterprises, policymakers, government advisors, program planners, and, and also government and for development organizations and media. This is the target audience we, we are addressing today. I have, I think there are other colleagues from FAO online who are working on complementary materials uh, for, for other groups, mainly consumers, ag extension workers, and so on. That can come up today. We're, we're drawing up on, we're drawing upon our extensive experience of training a lot of people at country level and at regional level on these approaches. So this is very much capitalizing a lot of lessons learned on, on country level to practice how it works. It's being done with a big consultation process involving many, many of you maybe, uh, and colleagues from, from the academia, development partners, government and uh, who are helping us make sure these modules respond to it. So it's um, the one I will focus on now very briefly is this one on, on the food system. It's a very interactive module. Uh, so Jaden here is our guide. And he's guiding Martha, who is a, pro a project planner for an NGO who works on food security programs, and Eric, who is the head of the food production department in the Ministry of Agriculture, and he's, he's coordinating the national food security policy. And they're both wondering how can they make, how can they bring nutrition into their work. Um, the module has five lessons: why nutrition matters, um, how does agriculture and food systems, uh, how do they influence nutrition, how do they make nutrition sensitive. And um, what are the main intervention areas for nutrition sensitive agriculture systems? And, and, and finally, the whole a brief on the international environment. So the ICN2, the uh, Decade of Action, the CSS, you know, a little bit of a guide of what that can mean for, for people uh, like Jamie.
Um, we we work to introduce the food system in a very simplified way, uh, but categorized around four main functions from food production, food storage, and processing, food trade and marketing, and consumer demand. And uh, we recognize that you know, the food system is the activities and also the stakeholders and institutions that are engaged in all of that. At the heart of our work is, is consumers, uh, consumers' diets and nutrition. And we, we consider the food environment to be the interface, basically, between the food system and the consumer. Uh, the food environment you know, being defined as, as the uh, factors that affect accessibility, uh, for desirability, and so on, that, that shape affordability, that shape consumer choice. To, to introduce the whole thing, we work with two scenarios. One is a, a, a rural family, so Ismail and Nayase, who are our farmers, um, and who face all sorts of challenges in terms of producing food, they face drought, they don't have access to good seeds, they don't have good facilities, they don't have access to markets, etc. All their, their whole family is malnourished. Um, and we also, so we, we really look at their environment and see how are the various functions of the food system related to that, and how is that shaping the nutritional problems? And then later, the solutions we can see that. We also work with Fatuma and her family. Fatuma is living in an urban slum, and she is overweight. Uh, her children are stunted and overweight. They're all micro-deficient. Uh, she's a street food vendor. Uh, they're accessing food in a very different way. There are issues of food safety, of uh, poor school meals, or no school meals at all in the school. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Um, and so this is really trying to, to a very practical approach, unpack what a food system approach means to addressing nutritional problems, um, and what are the intervention areas that we can use to address their different needs. So here is an example of a, a kind of toolbox of interventions. Uh, some are related to food production, so like diversification and diversification biofortification, biodiversity, urban and creative agriculture. Then we have things around food storage and processing, things around uh, food labeling, advertising and marketing, and, uh, regulations or even for incentives, food waste reduction, trade, um, promotion of healthy diets, and then on the consumer side, anything from school food and nutrition to also nutrition tests for social protection and things that help consumers access that the demand is, is not what is desirable. Afford it, um, consumers can afford them. Food safety, women's environment, and value chains are kind of cross cutting issues uh, across the food system. So that's about to come online. In two weeks, we're in the final point, uh, point of the development. They should be a lot of fun. Uh, then we'll be working on more of the situation analysis and design and monitoring. And uh, Jaden, Martha, and Eric, forward to interacting with all of you. Um, and they will be happy to hear your feedback. And so, if you need more information, as I said, this is just an, um, a small, a small proportion of what SAO is doing uh, on this on this topic. Uh, if you can go to our website, you will also get a guidance on assessments in particular women's dietary diversity, for example, food-based dietary guidelines, education, et cetera, et cetera, and a lot of e learning materials. So that is just an overview of some of our development work. Thank you.